not so much avoid it, but prevent it or slow it down, the, the impending nature of it. It's inevitably going to happen, but when the rapture happens, ha, <laughs> guys, that's when all that hell, literally, is going to be broken loose on the earth. That idiom that people use, all hell broke loose, I understand it's going to happen for real. For real. Hello, please lock, please comment, please share and share and share and share, and then please subscribe. Thanks. Lord God Almighty, have mercy on us. Have mercy on us as a human conglomerate, as a planet at large, because we have got some flaws. We have got some flaws in our character that are frankly detestable, and we need to overcome them by the Holy Spirit, amen, and put to death the deeds of the body, because the body is gangster, the body is fallen, that's why when you fart, it smells, there is corruption everywhere, nothing is clean. But we are headed towards a clean place for all we know the Lord. And those of us who know him are looking at this situation and are like, because hmm. it's ugly. And creation groans to see those of us who think that way revealed. It's also written in the same body of scripture that creation is subjected to the futility of us human beings. We make creation be like, oh, though, oh, guys. Meaning that nitrogen is like, I'm sorry, I'm not the reason why everything is ending. Why why are they stopping 30% of people from doing things? Or rather, 30% um, of people's farms from doing a thing. Carbon is looking at everybody and is like, mm, no, guys, you know, I'd like, I, I'm like the primary life form. Like, pretty much everything has a bond of me in it, yes, uh-huh. Yeah, I'm positive for you. It's like, you should be like saying, yay, carbon, yay, but you're not. Uh, but guess who gets it? Hey, God's daughters and sons, they understand. That I am the source of their sustenance. And that the more of me there is, the merrier. We are being lied to. Education is lying to us. Because it is being proliferated by a state body of people. It is built by a system that is nefarious and psychotic. Which is why it is imperative to put your children through Christian schooling. Goodness. Or independent schools that teach proven facts. As opposed to random lackluster stuff like evolution. That is not even um, empirically testable. Because it has no observable evidence within these hundred years. Uh, uh, within these um, hundreds, uh, sorry, thousands of years within which we have lived. There is no observable evidence of, of evolution. And yet it is being taught as fact. In, in, in universities. Never mind primary or high school. So a place of higher learning where people go to become really clever. They become boffins. Everybody like it looks upon them with favor. Because they are considered gifted intellectually. And they're being taught smack, basic rubbish, as fact. It's, it's alarming how many people you go and you interview about evolution and they just take it as fact. Literally, intelligent people that can go in a laboratory and debunk it, refuse to. Because it's just being pontificated. Talk about groupthink. You know what I mean? Groupthink. Like on some prolific level. And here it is that they are taking away 30% of farmland, blaming it on nitrogen. When yesterday the problem was carbon. Understand? It's going to be titanium next and then gold and then silver. And then it's going to become potassium. And then it's going to become, um, uh, what is, give me another element in the uh, periodic table, um, manganese. And then it's going to become, you get my point, we could go on and on and on. They will find anything. Creation says that I honor God and God said be fruitful and multiply therefore if nitrogen is killing you it is only because it has been given power by God to do so meaning that it's groaning that we might be revealed so human beings upon trying to fix a planet that can't be fixed apart from repentance are then subjugating other human beings to the tyranny of their decision making which is frankly all misplaced Herein lies a proof of the fact that not so much that climate change is not real or that it's a lie, but that climate change is reversible and that climate change is 100% the doing of God because of our sin. We are wicked. We are currently here on earth, presently for 6,000 years. That is provable. The millions of years that we apparently have been dwelling here, that's unprovable. Yet another thing that's being proven as, not proven, but taught or educated as fact, but we're not going to get into that right now. We've been chilling out in these streets for uh, 6,000 years. We're going to have another 1,000 years. The number of God's completion is seven. And so if at all everything is going to come to a like, you know, nice, beautiful ceiling, we know that likely what's going to happen is that God is going to end things finally, once and for all, officially at the seventh, at the seventh mark. We are currently sitting in year 6,000 or the era of the 6,000th years being completed. We still need to do another 1,000 in order for this earth to once and for all be finished. God created the world in seven days 
and in 7,000 years or 7 millennia, he is going to a day as a thousand years and a thousand years as a day. So the earth will linger for seven days and 1,000 years is a day. We have another thousand years to go. Meaning, Mr. Schwabster and everybody else are in these economic forum places alongside the World Health Organization that wants to have sovereignty over our health, <laughs> my dead body, uh, and everything else that's going on. They are not God and they're also lying about how bad things are here on the earth. They are the ones that are manufacturing random lackluster epidemics um, that become pandemics, that then become endemic in our societies. They are bringing pestilence when really there's no need to do that. Literally, even the gain of function research, um, little buggies in certain laboratories in certain parts of the world, uh, that stuff, the, the individual little buggies, the microbial, the, the microorganisms that you know, gave all of us, you know, that strange respiratory disease that we recently come from and we still in it. And now it's endemic. It's part and parcel of who we are now. Look at us go. Look at us go. Even those microorganisms are groaning to see the sons of God revealed because there is not a single creation of God or anything at all that is in creation that originated from the most high that is happy to decimate God's ideal. So basically, if at all, there is something being created for the destruction of the human race when God wanted to raise up the human race is going against God, meaning that the scientist that is busy with that gain of function research in that laboratory that we're not supposed to mention in that <laughs> place, wherever it is that it's at, is groaning. You're doing it anyway. Much like what, you know, like witches using a cat in order to do witchcraft. That cat is groaning because you're, you're using me for wicked ends. Creation is groaning that way. So manufacturing endemics, manufacturing diseases, manufacturing problems, manufacturing scenes, manufacturing all of these things. You create a problem. It's called the, um, the Galian dialectic where you create a problem to understand. And then later on, people are like, oh my goodness, there's a problem. <laughs> and then you rock up and you're like, I've got the solution. It's called the Galian dialectic where you cause chaos that you might rock up and save the day. They've got a messianic complex, a little bit of a rabubi, rabubi, no, 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 like a Spider-Man complex where there is a damsel in distress that needs rescuing. But instead of the damsel genuinely being in distress, they put the damsel in a position to be distressed. And then they're like, guess what? I'm Superman and I'm Spider-Man. I'm Batman. I'm a superhero. I'm whatever superhero you want to run with. A Galian dialectic. And that random insanity wreaking havoc on the planet um, is the bane of our existence. And that's why we have to pray, 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 pray. We are at the 6,000th year, guys, more or less around that time. Svegile, we are there, meaning we've got another thousand years to go. But the last 1,000 years is going to be right. Because in the last bit of that, I had to release some carbon. We are about to enter into the last millennium of um, the Earth's existence. And that can't happen before a certain time, y'all. <laughs> Yesterday, I spoke about how it is that you need to do everything in your power to prevent the, the tribulation. We cannot enter into the righteous reign of Jesus Christ unless... The world gets so ridiculous that Christ has to basically come down, touch down at the Mount of Olives with all of us. <laughs> hey, yay! <laughs> What's up? I saw you once upon a time on YouTube. Good looking now, brother. Hey, that's life for the Christian. We're going to know each other. Every lost person I'm digging on YouTube. <laughs> hey, we're going to be doing the two step in heaven. At the banquet, we're going to be chilling, eating it. But before then, we're going to watch the Hunger Games. I spoke about that yesterday. Right here on Earth, where the tribulation, the great gargantuan tribulation is going to be happening. There's basically going to be calamity before it gets better. It's going to get worse before it gets better. And whoever makes it, <laughs> like Pony Raban Peta, whoever makes it out of the tribulation, then maybe you get to experience the millennium. The millennial reign of Jesus Christ. The last 1,000 years. We have already done 6,000. Go do your research. We've literally already done 6,000. There is one millennium left, you guys. And that millennium is the only one in the history of the human race that is righteous. The last day that Christ, um, the, the, the Lord created the world in six days and rested on the seventh day. Well, we're going to rest on the seventh day. 
Aleluya. Amén, 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 amén. We're gonna rest. Hey, 1,000 years. You guys be out doing these people trying to do eternal life <laughs> in your own making by coming up with neural link and funny little uh, what do they call this? Um, uh, not not what is it? What is the name of it? Transhumanism, where you want to come and create like some superhuman being that's gonna live for like 10,000 years. <laughs> we live for eternity, but before then, we're gonna live right here for a thousand years. We're never gonna die, and I'm gonna explain to you how that's gonna happen. We are currently in the 6,000 year. We're going to enter into the 7,000 year. But before, between before then, there's going to be a seven year. Seven is, again, the number of God's completion. So how it is that he's going to finish you off is through yet another number seven see, see, season. And that number seven season is your one to seven of what is called the Great Tribulation. And this is a season within which people who enter into it have to survive if they're going to live in the millennial reign of Jesus Christ. However, the great chunk majority, frankly, of the human race is not going to make it out of this tribulation i am not being unbiblical or you know speculative here because i'm like you know a stock market analyst or whatever no it's the bible go only read the say the sealed judgments the trumpet judgments uh, in the book of revelation they decimate by the end of it all two-thirds of the human race the total number of people that die in the tribulation including christians is um i mean we're currently sitting in like what almost eight billion people so like four I mean, not four, sorry, six. Six billion people die. No, not, not, you're, more like, out of eight, what is a third of eight? It's like 2.5 or something, right? Like, please correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah, it's about 2.5 more or less, almost. Yeah, so there will be only about 2.5 p billion people left here on Earth. Um, after, I, <laughs> basically the world economic for the, the the global elites are gonna get what they want but in a really bad way not according to plan they're gonna get to georgia guidestones the planet but instead of 500 million being left it's going to be about 2 billion 2.5 billion people left out of 8 billion and the carnage is going to be exorbitant and they all are going to likely likely have taken the mark of the beast of whoever among them today don't repent so they will then be thrown into the lake of fire. How the whole seven year tribulation ends, guys, is that, like, first of all, the antichrist and the false prophet get thrown into the bottomless pit first. Um, the devil is bound in chains for that 1,000 years where we're going to be killing it in rest, right? But the guys and girls who took the mark of the beast, God is going to finish them off. He's not going to let them continue to live on the earth by... Killing them with the sword, the arrival, the return of Jesus Christ with all of us. Hey, what's going on? <laughs> In horses, on horseback, we're going to rock up and we are going to basically make war with the kingdom system, the system of the Antichrist. And anybody that has the mark of the beast in them will die by sword, by... um what is this uh, by famine etc whatever it is that's going to kill them that's going to kill them and then we are going to slay a whole bunch of them and the rest that remain are going to god is going to charge foul birds of the sky and beasts of the land to come and have you know a little bit of a feast with their bodies they will get eaten alive by animals they will be gouged their eyes will be gouged by birds that are going to peck at them while they are still alive every last person that takes the mark of the beast is going to die like that but not everybody's going to take the mark of the beast. There will have been people who fled to the mountains of Judea and hid there uh, within the state of uh, Israel. There will have been people across the world that will have been so buried from the sight of the Antichrist that they will have made it to the end of the tribulation and can't take it, take it, taking the mark. Like a lot of people in the desert land and the um, country regions, never mind country, but like, you know, in, in dry, arid zones, they will have not got been within central society sufficiently enough for them to get to the place where they give the mark of the beast. There will have been people who have resisted the mark of the beast because they believe upon whatever religion they believe in and they are sticking to their guns. And there will, of course, then be people who don't take the mark of the beast because they believe is in the Lord Jesus Christ. Do you understand? They will make it to the end of the tribulation. Some of them might get martyred because they didn't want to take the mark of the beast. And if they're in Christ, they will drain the batch of saints that are in heaven watching the Hunger Games, basically. Right. That's what's going to happen. And then at the, at the return of the Lord Jesus Christ, after that seven year mark, where the Antichrist is now going to be thrown into a bottomless pit with the uh, false prophet. 
where after the Lord has returned and all the, the, the dead that um, will then be in Hades banked until the great white throne judgment that comes at the end of the millennial reign of Jesus Christ. They will go to ha the, 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 the holding place, Hades, death, whatever, Gehenna, what you want to call it. And the rest of the human race that are alive, who don't have the mark of the beast, be they Christian or not, will then get to see the return of the Lord Jesus Christ and live in the millennium. But um, without the incorruptible bodies. So they will get to likely repent because they saw the return. So therefore, to ride out the tribulation is the best thing you can do for yourself, whether or not you even know Christ. Because the return of the Lord will convert people to Jesus that have not converted. But if you've taken the mark, it's over for you. And it is within that millennial reign of Jesus Christ where the church is finally going to have rest. And we are going to come back. Remember, at the seven year mark... So at the beginning of that seven year tribulation, that is going to be sparked by a, an event that we call in the church, the rapture. There are people who disagree as to the timing of the rapture is in the middle, is at the, at the end. I frankly, personally, in and of myself, am pre-trip and that's not a, a, a note of contention for us, really. We shouldn't fight about it. We'll find out. We'll, we'll know. Like when it happens, we'll be like, oh, I was mistaken. It was mid-trip or oh, I was mistaken. It was pre-trip or post-tribulation. I personally believe in the pre-trip rapture right uh so i'm going to then of course say this message in light of my beliefs you can you know change it up according to whatever it is that might be your belief of the tribulation uh or the, of the rapture when it happens the lord is going to come and rapture the church at the beginning of the seven year tribulation that is what's going to spark the worldwide calamity that is the tribulation that's going to then ultimately also usher in the antichrist man that is going to happen the rapture that is when you guys refuse to repent and pray that your nations might be healed from the insanity of the global elites. When you who have got a normalcy bias basically believe that things are going to be okay despite the fact that people are trying to take away 30% of your farmland. If you don't open up your eyes and realize what's actually going on, you are going to find yourself in a position to have never mind 30% of your farmland taken but all of it. And that farmland is going to be taken never mind by your governments. No, 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 no. It's going to be God. He is going to destroy a third of the land. A third of the water is going to be turned to blood. You will be endured through wormwood. You are going to have a stone in from the sky. It will come and rock up and make your water bitter and kill a whole bunch of people in the human race. You are going to see, I mean, I personally believe it's real zombies because death in Hades is going to come on earth. And death in Hades currently is filled with people who have died to this date uh, that have not loved the Lord. Uh, alongside, of course, menacing beasts, demons, and all different kinds of funny stuff. I believe it's going to walking on, be walking, walking on the earth. Like, if you see the walking dead, you know, shows that have got zombies in them and whatnot. All of this stuff of funny little menacing beasts walking on the earth. Hollywood is strangely prophetic. I believe they are basically depicting or drawing a picture of what the world is going to look like in the tribulation. The devil knows what's going to happen in the future, so he inspires movie directors, producers, whatever, in Hollywood and other entertainment industries to pretty much give you a picture of your future, like you're being mocked. So if you've seen a movie where there are monsters walking around in these streets, gnawing into people, targeting them, or people walking around literally as zombies, the walking dead. A revelation, I believe, six, I stand corrected as to where exactly. It speaks about how it is that the, the, the dead, death and Hades are going to come on the earth. And um, those zombies essentially are then going to start massacring people. I believe in real zombies that are going to come. Uh, there are others who go and make out of it a metaphor or an allegorical thing. But so far the Bible, portions of it that we as believers have thought are allegorical or metaphoric as the years have progressed and so therefore bible prophecy gotten fulfilled we have come to convert our conviction about it being a metaphor into the fact that it is rather literal because of how it literally came to pass so i believe the book of revelation right now looks really bizarre to us to a point where most of us are interpreting it allegorically but we are going to find out that the allegorical interpretation was actually rather literal because the things in revelation are so bizarre and taboo to even fathom as being real that you know some of us just go on right ahead to like think that it's likely an interpret a metaphor how it is that these things are going to happen uh do you understand so uh when then the seven year tribulation eventually does unfold on the earth the horror of every man on the street guys it's just astro it's, it's astronomical like literally horror movies are going to come alive in the seven year season and you won't even recognize the earth you won't believe your eyes you're not going to believe your mind you're not going to believe your own heart how you feel there will be a season a time where people are going to be trying to kill themselves and not be able to die that is a, a, a prophecy in the uh, book of revelation 
That's what you're facing as a human race. That's why I'm like, y'all need to try and avoid the rapture as much as possible. Or not so much avoid it, but prevent it or slow it down. The, the impending nature of it. It's inevitably going to happen. But when the rapture happens, ha, <laughs> guys. That's when all that hell, literally, is going to be broken loose on the earth. That idiom that people use, all hell broke loose. I understand it's going to happen for real. For real. And that's going to be brought about by the fact that Literally, the thoughts and intentions of mankind were evil continually. And God was like, no, kill them all. But bring only Noah and his fam into the ark. We are the fam. We are about to be brought into the ark. Believers in the Lord Jesus Christ. And we are trying to say to you guys, hey, 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 some more, right? Uh, guys, look at what they're doing. The World Economic Forum. You think that um, climate change is your biggest problem? You think that... Um, what is this? Even just the global elite and these diseases that are rising up in your grill is your biggest problem. No, guys, your biggest problem is God. Like, <laughs> your biggest problem is God. Like, if you don't repent, the God of the universe who has power over the elements, the whole of the periodic table that we have yet to even find out the true scope of it, that is who it is that you need to appease. Not your, 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 don't, I mean, even the marches, the riots, the complaints, the standing by the farmers, um, there in the Netherlands. I mean, uh, yeah, yes, fight, stand, indeed, protest. Well, this is, um, um, like, malady. It's anarchy. Stop it. These government the figures are ridiculous. But apart from Christ, if you don't, upon grabbing your, your little placard to say, pantsing in nonsense, pantsy, apart from, if you don't, with the placard, also say, in the name of Jesus, whatever. Your works are futile. Their riots are futile. Their marching is futile. Because it is not in the name of the Lord. Unless the builder builds a house in the name of the Lord, the builder builds in vain. So they are rioting in vain. They are marching in vain. They are standing against the global elite in vain because they're not coming in the name of Jesus. If you don't literally go to God to do your stand against corruption, whatever, man, it's useless. What we need to try and do is avert Guys, the return of the Lord. We need to avert the rapture of the church. If at all you want to have some kind of a semblance of a normal life. If we can't successfully achieve that, then you as an individual must repent so you can go in the rapture with the church. Because you don't want to be here in that seven year mark. According to statistics, you are highly unlikely going to make it. Only a third of the world is going to get to the very end. So if at all you are alive today and the rapture happens today, chances are in seven years you're going to be dead. You're going to be in hell. Or you're going to be in heaven. You will either die a martyr's death in Christ or a martyr's death because you are standing your guns for whatever other cause. Or you're going to get killed by all the myriads of disasters on the earth that are going to come. You are going to be either in hell or heaven after seven years ends. So if you don't want to die, God, I personally am afraid of the process of dying, but not so much what happens afterwards. I don't know what it's going to feel like to breathe my last or for my heart to stop beating. Um, if it's a natural death or even like to just get crushed by metal because I'm in a car accident. I don't want to experience death. So I really hope I'm among the rapture generation because we will not all die. But we will be transformed as with the twinkling of an eye and we'll be caught up in the class to meet the Lord in the air. But the dead in Christ will rise first. I, I, I long to leave with the rapture much like Elijah because <laughs> I don't want to experience dying but I'm not scared of what happens after because you know I know Jesus I'm saved um and so death is not a very daunting thing for me uh to face ultimately just the transitory season of it is what's what's taxing um to my understanding right oh so if you don't if you're like me <laughs> basically and you're you're, you're kind of scared of the process of dying um give your life to the lord so you won't have to because we are i believe the generation that's going to get taken with the rapture i am however trying to advocate for the delay of the rapture for your sake for the sake of those that are not saved because the tribulation is by far the worst time in the history of the human race and indeed the bible does say that there is no time like it there will be such a great tribulation such as has never happened in the history of the human race. No, nor ever shall there be again. Do you understand? There will be rest on the seventh day. And that rest is the millennial reign of Jesus Christ. But before that seven year rest comes, the world must be entirely decimated, neutralized. It has to be prepared or made ready for the return of the Lord. So at the seven year mark, after literally the wickedness of this world has reached the end of itself, the wine, the wine press of the wrath of God has reached an, an umph degree. Revelation is in 15, 16, 17 around there. They kill so many Christians 
that their blood fills up 1,600 stadia. God was angry when Christians got slaughtered, massacred, devoured by ravenous beasts in the Colosseum back in the days of the Roman persecution of the church. He was mad then. God was mad when they threw Daniel in the lion's den. He was mad when um, his Hebrews, his children were being... I, I need to stop. Sorry, I saw the owner of the car coming. I thought she wanted her car to go somewhere, but she was just going to the next door neighbor. So uh, I'm just going to be... I'm, I'm going to be able to finish this. God was mad when all of the, the captivity uh, of, of his people... Like when pharaoh wanted to hold on to his children and they were made slaves and they were struggling they were suffering so he sent moses over he was mad then but i understand that never in the history of the human race has have so many christians ever been killed to a point of populate or believers in christ to a point of populating 1600 stadia with blood and so the final the seven bowls of god's wrath written off the last pretty much slap on the face of the human race that happens in the book of revelation is god's final straw and it takes seven whole years for things to get to that point. Meaning that the fact that the human race is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked, their hearts gets proven, fulfilled in the seven year tribulation. Because despite the fact that God is judging them like this, they still don't repent. Neither did they repent from their sorceries, their fornications, their, their, their idolatries. It is written of them when they get plagued. And so they continued with their murders, their revilings. And God got angry and angrier to a point where... They now ended 1,600 stadia worth of his believers, worth of blood. That was like the final straw. And it is like right there before the seven bowls of God's wrath get poured out. Go read Revelation, guys. It's a movie. It's a movie unfolding right before your eyes. It is written that heaven goes silent. It goes silent for half an hour. The way it's about to shuba, you know? The way it's about to go down. Gatul. For half an hour. Have you seen in movies... Just before a tsunami hits the shore or a bomb lands. How like there is a slow motion scene in the movie where people are looking up seeing the missile, the, the bomb, the nuke flying up, uh, overboard and is about to land where they're at. How it's so silent. It's literally like, I just picture it that way. Where something heavy is about to land on the earth and it's quiet for half an hour. And the thing that also aggravates god is the fact that the the the, the, the censer is it the the, the prayer the, the bowl that has got the prayers of the saints gets opened and so basically all the prayers of tina my laments personally i thought about that my laments are over these eight years that i've been persecuted god what's what's going on what's happening please save me lord do you even care for me i just imagine this thing being opened in heaven and god was prayers coming out john's prayers uh, like noah's prayers um you get my point God, what are they doing? Father, I'm about to be murdered. Look, Father, they are taking us to the ocean, about to cut our heads off. The ISIS murder of those people at the beach. You will remember how the, 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 the water in the ocean was so bloody. Because they had murdered like a row of Christians on their knees. Those, those men wearing balaclavas. And they just chopped off their, 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 their um, hands. Hey, hey, are you feeling reached by my content on YouTube? If so, you might be interested in checking out my tweets as well, alongside reading my content on my WordPress account, alongside checking out my shorts on TikTok. They're all in the description box below. Please enjoy the next coming content. Bye. I just imagine the prayers of those men as they were lying there. Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. I can't believe I'm about to be massacred. I can't believe my life is about to end today. Please, Lord, open for me a way in heaven as I'm about to die. All those prayers. When Martin Luther got, 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 got uh, martyred, the, martyr, the, the, the book of the martyrs, Fox's book of martyrs, all the prayers of all of those Christians before they died, Peter, just before he got hung upside down on a cross, what prayers he was saying, that, that bowl getting opened and all these prayers just coming up and it causes God so much grief and he cries and in him it's just like a, a boiling, a, a magnification of wrath. Do you understand? And so, I mean, when God is that angry, don't nobody move, you better keep quiet. So does literally heaven then is silent for half an hour, not only listening to the prayers of the saints, but the full number of the martyrs that were under the altar has now been gathered. If anything, they have filled up 1,600 stadia with blood. And then after that half an hour, seven bowls of God's wrath ending with people getting plucked by birds, eaten by animals. Then the Lord returns. Yeah, guys, that is what's going to happen. 
and the fact that they never repented despite seeing their planet being destroyed like this evidences the fact or the veracity of scripture that the human heart is as he fell above all things and desperately wicked and that there is no one who does good no not one for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God and that every single person on earth can't choose God God gotta choose them otherwise they will literally do nothing but wickedness all the way to the very end of themselves it gets worse before it gets better the tribulation does not spark fear in the hearts of the human race it sparks more rebellion only a remnant repent you don't want to make it to the tribulation. You want to make it to heaven prior to the tribulation. So I do these messages in order to try and get people to repent. If at all they won't repent sufficiently enough for God to stay his hand of wrath. Or I'm doing it so that the Lord will stay his hand of wrath. Basically to get such a global repentance. I try and achieve it with my brothers and sisters. Of course, the, the work we're doing, we're trying to achieve a global repentance or at a minimum, the individual repentance of people who will listen to us. That they might miss the tribulation and so make the rapture. Because we're going to be watching it from heaven, looking down. That's definitely going to happen. You can trust that, guys. It is scary. Indeed, when they say something is of biblical proportions, you're about to find that out. So this thing that's happening in the world right now, all these things, all these events that keep on coming all up in my grill, into my understanding. I'm like, hey, guys, do we really actually have, like, is it possible at this point, at this rate, with this pomp or arrogance of the global elites? Is, is there any coming out of this? I mean, this is the first time in history where this level of arrogance among global elites is um, consumed by the population on the ground and they don't care. Before, they were stealthy and pernicious, kind of surreptitious, eh? Under, under reps with their strategy, hoping to come out on the other side victorious because they were clandestine. Now they're in our face presenting wickedness and yet they are still conquering us, overwhelming us. It is only in Christ that we can bring down their structures because I said yesterday it's a principality it's a force it's wickedness that is inspiring the global elites to do this so therefore we must bring down those spiritual weapons with spiritual weapons we gotta fight in the spirit meaning we have to pray we have to fast we have got to give our lives to the Lord that the world might not look like it does in the days of Noah where the thoughts and intentions of mankind are evil continually we cannot try and and conquer the loading it over us with an iron fist attempt to acquire all of our acquisitions we can't, we can't fight it with just a march, a strike, a riot. Because either way, the shelves of your um, country's supermarkets are still going to go empty. And so you're still going to go hungry. And your farmers are going to, irrespective of them standing against this like ridiculous regime or an infiltration in their lives, they're still going to have their land taken away from them. They're still going to get, um, uh, what is this, fined, uh, whatever might be the punishment if at all they don't adhere to these laws by 2030. But at the same time, we are at the 6,000th year. So I feel as if at this point, I'm rather petitioning for people to get into the first raft that goes to heaven. I, there will, I, I believe in multiple, um, not so much raptures, guys, but there will be such massacrings or killings of Christians that it's going to be a ton amount of raptures. Like just a mass, like a, a killing, a mass murdering. That there will constantly be batches upon batches of saints landing in heaven during the tribulation. But you want to be the batch that goes in like Elijah, guys. You do. You, you don't want to die. Not like that. They are so horrible and sadistic that they're likely going to torture you to death. It won't be a slow or a, a, felt le a, death, a feltless death, much like inhaling carbon monoxide. It's going to be likely gassing that causes your lungs to bleed first before you die or um, electrocution because they're going to try and force you to capitulate or take the mark of the beast because the devil is trying to get as many people to hell as possible. So if he can get you to renounce your faith, then great. And the way to do that is by torture, slow torture. So you don't want to die like that, especially considering you never could have fathomed ever dying like that, given that you come from a TikTok generation where you could do silly videos and a um, people view you and now you are about to literally like swim in your own blood in your lungs because they they are making you inhale some toxic gas that kills you over 48 hours you will feel every last blow every pain you don't want to go through that you don't want to go through that things you can't fathom today are going to become fact tomorrow so i'm trying to petition for people to repent give their lives to the lord jesus christ so that we can avert the rapture period for now because, I mean, really, we're trying to just delay the inevitable as opposed to prevent it. Or to get as many people to make the rapture as possible. Like, times are really bad. We've already done 6,000 years, guys. And the last 1,000 years is going to be peaceful. And there is no peaceful reign of Christ before the tribulation. So if we are at the 6,000 year mark, guys, we just have to do the last seven years. And I, frankly, would like to do those seven years from heaven. I don't know about you. 
I want to be the elite watching the Hunger Games from up there down, as opposed to being in the mix of all this darkness. I mean, there will be people who are going to be saved in the tribulation, but yar, your life is, you're going to be, you're likely, if you make it to the end, you're probably going to be emaciated, uh, like famished. You will have been starved. You will have been made to eat rats. Do you understand how to survive, how su surviving in that season will have been very, very difficult. I believe in um, the current, the present day church actually building some kind of storehouses or bunkers for the tribulation church. So that they can make it through for people who will repent once the tribulation happens but time is running out i personally had a dream to do that like literally make like joseph and create like some underground they're already doing that like bunkers like wartime bunkers they're already building them for the elite people who can afford them but i believe that christians should currently be building bunkers for the persecuted church of the tribulation so they can at least have food all the way to the end but people like me can't even get a job we, we can't even work to a point where we can even start a project of that nature I had a desire to start a project to help seven year tribulation saints where they can go and literally ride out that storm underground. But they have made sure that I can't even get that started at all. That level of care dwells in the heart of God for the tribulation saints to a point where he will give his own children a desire to do that for, 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 for a future generation, for people in the future to survive it. Uh, but those that have got such desires are like basically held in persecution in and of themselves just like me. Guys, we need to repent. The Lord, like, we're going to go up in the rapture. We're going to get incorruptible bodies. So when we come back, we're still going to be in incorruptible bodies. That's how we're going to be able to live a thousand years. But whoever is alive is going to have their normal bodies. And so they're going to die like everybody else. Meaning that you're literally going to have a whole bunch of supernatural beings walking around you, among you. You know how Jesus could walk through walls? I believe we're going to be able to do that in our incorruptible bodies. Have you ever seen a movie out here in these streets where there are people, a, a, a race of individuals that are larger than everybody, that are supernatural, that have got strength above everybody else? Avatar. Where the Na'vi are big, huge, like these bodies that are basically indestructible, while there are the sky people who are human beings. Hollywood keeps on predicting the future, but in a way that you can't even gauge is biblical because they are satanic, they're devilish. So just like in the movie Avatar, there will be at the end of the Avatar movie, you know how there are um, those people from the earth who did not hurt the cause of Pandora. They stayed on, 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 on Pandora. And Neytiri and Jake Sully and all the other avatars, the people who were avatars were huge, but Jake Sully's friend was still a human being, but he, he got to stay on Pandora. That's literally how the earth is going to look like in the tribulation wave. If you make it to not tribulation in the millennial reign if you make it past the seven year mark and you didn't take the mark of the beast god is going to allow you to live out the rest of your life but in a corruptible body basically while you are living among christians who went to heaven but they came back with the return of the lord and they're going to have supernatural bodies so just like the navi and the sky people living on one planet but the sky people are tiny in comparison to the navi we're going to have bodies like that. And that's how the righteous reign of Jesus Christ is even going to be possible. God is going to give us positions of honor all across the world. Meaning that, I mean, really, who in the world stands up against a Navi when they're a sky person? You're not, corruption is not going to flourish. People are going to have their own lands. They're going to live peacefully. Uh, issues are going to be resolved in a holy way. So the earth is not going to be without sin because there will still be people who sin in it. But there will be a righteous reign. So you're going to know what justice actually looks like. You want to know what justice truly looks like, what the world is supposed to look like, what after Christ giving us commandments to live through or by, what the world would have been like if we all adhered to them. And on that day, we're going to finally realize that they lied to us about carbon emissions being a thing, nitrogen emissions being a thing, being a thing that was destroying the earth because how in the world are we able to live another 1,000 years on a planet that was apparently about to die by 2030, enough for them to take our land, 30% of it. In order to achieve that purpose literally rip away our resources that they might create this particular world we're going to live another 1000 years proving that climate change is not so much a lie but something that god did to bring people to repentance and when then they didn't he then like decimated them those who lay, who remained that were upright he will then allow them to live another 1,000 years on a planet that strangely is not melting at the ice caps, that is strangely not uh, enduring random famines and floods and all of the, basically all of these natural disasters that you're seeing in the world, they're going to be abated because holiness is what cures the land. Not so much our strategies, not so much the reduction of carbon emissions or nitrogen or whatever in the sky. Holiness. We must repent for the earthquakes to stop. 
And miraculously, in that 1,000 years, there will be no natural disasters. And we're going to see it. You're going to see it. Well, of course, unless, unless of course, you find yourself in um, Hades, in which case, then I guess not, right? But those that make it to the end do. But, I mean, who wants to live in a planet that has got mutants in it all over the show, big, fat, chunky people that have got superpowers, while you're this tiny little guy that still needs to die? That gets old, that walks around with a stick while Garabo is forever young. I wanna be forever young. Does not age. You don't wanna be that guy. So you don't wanna be the Christian that makes it to the end of the tribulation, who the Lord returned and rescued us from the Antichrist, but you haven't died. And so your body is not going to be transformed with the twinkling of an eye because it happens once in the history of the human race at the rapture. So you're going to be the Christian that dies. Like you live out the rest of your life, the, le- the rest of the 20, 30 years left of it. And then you die and go to heaven and then you- we'll see you later. The rest of us are going to be here on earth, um, finishing off the 1000 year millennial reign of Jesus Christ. Then there's going to be the great white throne judgment. And then only there's the new Jerusalem, the new heaven and the new earth. That's the chronology of the Bible. And I believe the chronology. So as believers, it is important, or as people, you, it is important to repent before the rapture. So one, you can get an incorruptible body and come back in an avatar body, right? Um, and two, that you might avoid the tribulation, like period. So if you want to have an incorruptible body and know what it's like to live without, like not without dying on this earth, this very earth, you'll repent. We're going to touch down on, like Christ is going to touch down on the Mount of Olives and we're going to be coming with him as the saints. You will respect me. Even though you disrespect me today, you will finally be like, yo, Garabo, girl, I see where you were coming from. If you made it, of course. If you made it. And on that day, my name is not going to be Garabo. It's going to be whatever is my name in heaven. That is unique to just me. That is the Bible. It might sound like some sci-fi movie now. But understand, it's biblical truth, it's veracious, and the fact of the proven prophecy of the Bible historically um, ought to then uh, motivate you to realize that it will continue to get proven, even those prophecies that are yet to be fulfilled. Repent if you want a slot in heaven in the seven-year tribulation. Repent if you want to be among those who contributed to God staying his hand from pouring his wrath on the earth. Repent if you want an incorruptible body in the millennial reign so you don't have to die. Repent if you want to be able to look at your aging like abuser and afflictor that repented only in the tribulation age. <laughs> well, you don't. Repent. These things are going to happen. They're not a fairy tale. They're in the scriptures and it is movie-like, but it's true. Rioting is not going to do anything. Lamenting is not going to do anything. Picketing, throwing toys at the cot, it's not going to do anything if it's not done in the name of Jesus. It's getting bad. But if you don't repent, it's going to get worse. I'm signing out in Christ's name. I hope you've been edified, cranky. Peace. Don't forget to like.